have a little chaos on my table here today, but that's um, sort of the realistic part of having a creative mind, I think. But I wanted to pop in and share a few things with you. So I'm gonna turn the camera around where you'll just see my hands, but you'll be able to hear me talking. So there we go. So hopefully you'll be able to see, see everything from there. I wanted to show you the sort of the different stages of the ornaments. These are, um, I've worked on some here before. These are uh, Dairies, that, which is Michael's brand, and these are the large one. They're the right at four inches, 3.94 inch ornaments. So you can see how uh, big this is in my hand. So it's a uh, softball size at least. This is one that um, I did already. Uh, on another video, but I wanted to come back and show you the results of that. This one, I uh, put them on wet so that they would hold and put the first coat of paint on them that same day and then some uh, big top on them after that in order to get it to uh, have to have a top coat on it. And they came off. So uh, FYI, I have a new plan on that that I'm going to share with you. But this one's still going to work because we're going to touch up the paint. Now that they're dry and glued well on here, I re-glued them. I glued these with 3-in-1 um, glue. Uh, a lot of people are using the E6000. I don't have any of that today and I didn't want to delay this anymore. So I'm going to come forward and we're going to be using wood glue. Um, I used... What I used on this set, I used the, uh, you can see some it's smeared on there, but because these are going to be textured, I'm not worrying about it. That was the 3-in-1 um, glue, and on this one, I used uh, wood glue, and I think the wood glue stuck a little bit better. And today, I'm going to use wood glue again, but another tip that I have for you, because the the molds do tend to slide around on these glass balls a little bit. We're going to put a little bit of painter's tape over them to hold them in place for a little while. And you can choose, since they're going to take more than one coat of paint, you can choose whether to, uh, whether to just go with one coat of, you know, paint the first coat while they're wet, which I will do on this one today as well. Um, so let's just get going from there so it doesn't take very long. This is possibly dried a little bit because I should have put it in a Ziploc and I didn't. This is Paper Clay by Prima. And let me dig down in here and get some off of this side to make sure it's going to work good. If you've not used it before, this is, a, this is pretty thick as well. But you kind of need it. And this is, this is hard, hard, hard. It makes me want to wet my fingers to, in order to get it on better and to make this go faster. But that's mostly because I want to... And I am going to wet my fingers, and I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not, but this is really, really stiff. Um, and we will, this is one of the new IOD molds. It has like a little cherub face there in the middle. That's what I'm going to use. It's the same one that I used here. But I just want to show you how one of these works. And I'm going to do something else on this one, and I'll show you that as well. But I'm not wanting it to take up a whole lot of our time so that you can see... Um, through each of the stages of progress how that works. I have my uh, bucket of water there for painting right beside that and I'm just sort of dampening my finger a little bit to make this a little bit more pliable. It's like a nearly dried out Play-Doh right now. And then you just stuff it down in the mold, push it down in there really, really good. <sighs> And this, if you've not used them for paper clay, these uh, molds, most of them are food safe. So you could make beautiful chocolates and things like that. And uh, th that's what people use on wedding cakes and stuff like that. You see all these beautiful, wit intricate wedding cakes and you're thinking, oh my goodness, that person's such an artist. How in the world did they get something so beautiful on that cake? It must be worth, you know, that's why wedding cakes are $1,000. They're just using molds. They have a Cricut, which is similar to the Silhouette, uh, that's called Cricut Cake. They don't make it anymore, but they're still out there and people are still using them. And uh, 
anything that you have a Cricut cartridge for or anything that you could have went to on Silhouette for or whatever, you can uh, cut it out on there. That's how they get the name so perfect and that's how they get the decoration so perfect. I did a, a really cool cake on uh, Toy Story for my grandson one year because he was a fan of Toy Story that year. He's a fan of the Avengers and all that now and Red Hulk. Uh, Let's see, that's still a little bit lumpy in there, but that's not that big of a deal. I'm going to roll this over it, my little brush here to kind of straighten it. But what I'm mostly is the most important for me is to make sure it's pushed in from all the edges to where it's right up to the edge of the mold. Because if you don't, and I'm sure there'll be a little piece and I'll show you in just a minute that's not, uh, then that's a piece of your design. Then all you do is uh, bend this mold back. And you look like a genius because you've got this cool looking thing that just came out of there. How cool is that? Now you could let this dry and put it on a piece of furniture. But see this little piece coming out right here at the bottom? That's the piece that I left for you to see what I was talking about of why you want to make sure and push it all up into your mold. Because that will stick out. And if this was uh, going to be an intricate piece to where it, you know, that mattered, then I would have been more careful with it. But it's, these are going to look distressed anyway, so that doesn't matter. So there it is. Now I sort of pinched that off. To me, that, that just blows me away how cool that is. And I'm going to use my wood glue here. And this is because my husband's a carpenter. Wood glue is what we have. And I got out a paintbrush so that I could look all fancy pants and not be sticking my finger in the glue, but I forgot. <laughs> I am who I am, and I'm finger glue girl. <sighs> now I'm I don't have my apron on, so I'm going to wipe it on my drop cloth. Okay, this is still soft and pliable. It's kind of cold, and it usually doesn't feel that way, but I'm guessing it's because it's winter time. But I am hot up in here. Okay, so now it's on there, and I kind of have it where I want it. It's going to be important to make sure that these edges are held, held down, because like looking at this one, it kind of wants to come up off of there a little bit as it dries. So here's my new brilliant idea for that. Use that to sit it in. Now it's uh, heavy on that side and wanting to flip, put it back in there. I'm going to just take, I'm not going to push this down hard on there because at this point you could still mash your decorative part. Mercy me. Let's just get some of this on there. You see it's already wanting to come up just a little bit. See it right there? I'm just going to push that back down and that wood glue it's going to hold it down, and then I'm going to put this tape on here just enough to hold those edges down. I'm going to go across it this way. Hopefully there's enough room for that. Yep. Let me get one more little piece of tape to get that. Well, I probably could pull it off right here, huh? There you go. Well, I'm not a waster. Okay, so that's going to kind of hold it down tight as it dries, and then that tape won't leave any residue on here. That's what it's made for, and we'll get back to that one. Well, here's the other one thing I wanted to show you. This is, and I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try it, and then you'll know. These are like some round medallions, and I'm going to try to put one. I'll put it on one of these so that I can leave that one alone. I'm going to try to make one real quick so that I can decorate the top of one of these. Let's see how that works. I think it might be just one more, wetting my finger here, one more really cool element to the ornaments. You know, if you're making these for, you know, your friends and family and your own home tree and all that kind of stuff, then, you know, you're just loving the experience and loving what you're doing and loving being creative and all those kind of things. But when you're making it to sell, which is what I'm doing, uh, because we have a Christmas festival here Saturday and I wanted to have a few ornaments out there, then you have to keep in mind the cost of your materials and how long you spend on it and all that kind of stuff. So... 
I'm not wanting to spend a whole lot of, t a lot of time on it so that, you know, ain't nobody going to pay $20 a piece for these things or anything. Let's see. Just want one that's relatively simple but big enough to fit on there. Oh, I should have figured this ahead of time. Uh, I don't want it to be bigger than that. We're going to go with this one. Let's just go for it. Get it in the mold. Y'all see that? making sure it's pushed all the way to those edges because that's the decorative part of this that that really matters and here's what I'm going to do now I'm going to pop that out and I'm going to see if I can pop bring these wires in at least a little bit I can't uh and I brought a like an exacto I don't have an exacto with me I got a box cutter because I'm at work and I'm going to want to cut a center in this about the size of this, which you can't get down in there. There you go. Pulled that out. I'm going to make sure it's, for the most part, centered there. Poking it in to give myself some little lines, and then I'm fixing to cut that center out of it. I'm trying to get through the uh, dough stuff here without cutting my pretty gray part. Oh. Pushing it back up into those edges because I pulled it out a little bit with all my fiddling. Let's see if I can get it out. There you go. Came out with the hole in it that's hopefully the right size. I don't see very well. I apologize, but there's I have a contact in already or I would put some glasses on. I had eye surgery and it was a failure and they had to go back in and take the implant out and all those things. So now I just suffer with it. I have to get this back in here now because it won't work if I don't. I don't know what this metal is made out of, but it is not much thicker than aluminum foil. I tell you, I think our aluminum foil is thicker. Yay, I did it. Okay, let's see if, oh, let's get some wood glue on it. Just put a little bit on there. It didn't work like I wanted, but we're going to make it look how we want it. Now I'm sort of just mashing it down, and basically all I really wanted, almost like a ceiling fan medallion, I wanted it to have a bit of a medallion to give it just a little bit of an extra something-something there on top. And it, it did, and I've got it good and mashed on there, so I'll leave that one. Okay. I've changed my mind on what color that I'm going to uh, paint these, so I'm just going over. I don't know whether to go over that one with the dark and decrepit at this point and leave this one a lighter color, or whether, and I think I will. Let's see if I can reach that without knocking over the thing. I do believe I did this one in crinoline and I have a little bit of that right here. I'm gonna 
dab into these uh, edges right there where the paint came off. I'll just use this one I got out for the glue. This is going to be darker later anyway, so I'm not worried about it, you know, not matching on to the rest of the ornament here. Just wanting to, the glass that's under there right now, see how the glass part's exposed. I'm just wanting that covered with paint. And anywhere that I scratched already, these things have been brought to work and home, work and home, work and home, thinking I was going to get them done. And I've had so many projects go in that they've been neglected. Now it's last minute and I'm doing this thing. This one's really pretty too, I think. Uh, the mold that was used for it. I'm going to get up on this a little bit just because I'm going to tie a pretty bow on it later. Now I'm looking for any place where it's been scratched or not looking at 100%, and I'm going to just dab some paint on there. I'm not really putting any on the molds themselves. I'm just going on the glass part. Now I've decided I should probably go all the way around it, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. This dries really quick. I don't have my fan going in here, although I should because I am hot. Uh, so we're just going to sit it to the side now and let it dry with that one. And this is the one we're going to paint. I got out uh, Dixie Bell Vintage Duck Egg, and I'm going to do all of these in the Vintage Duck Egg by Dixie Bell. know whether I needed to use I'm gonna take this out and stick my finger in there uh, slick stick on this because it is slick but I'm gonna just keep painting and I'm not gonna to have to worry about any shrinkage with this one because it's already shrunk it's already dry I painted these in my husband or not painted but I put these uh, IOD molds on here these paper clay molds uh, in my husband's man cave while I was watching the West Virginia Mountaineers play football the other night. My husband's from West Virginia and he's a huge college football fan. So I try to be supportive of that and be in there and holler yay team and all that stuff. But really, I'm making crafts. He probably has my number. I didn't tape these down. That's when I thought about the taping, which may have been his idea. If it's brilliant, it was my idea, but he may have mentioned it <laughs> uh, whenever they were coming off. But once we start aging these um, and using an antique and glaze or a wax or a patina, whatever I end up doing with them. I got out some wax. I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do now that I'm painting them this color instead of uh, the crinoline. Crinoline or crinoline. I don't know which one is correct. I have, uh, I got out some ornaments that I made last year for us here 
actually I made them all out of pine cones with like fake diamond brooches and stuff stuck to them to you know be like the is it juxtapication I have no idea what the word is to where it's like sort of like a leather and lace you know a, a, an all natural and a all dolled up thing at the same time so I've got all those out in there today this is pretty I love this color paint I don't know if anybody's Christmas tree is this color but my heart led me to this color and I always try to trust it I think I'm going to sit this down at. I think what I'm going to do is grab this blow dryer. Let's see, I have one on the floor beside me. I have this tripod. Uh, hey, Sandra. Right behind me and I can't bend over. I don't know if this blow dryer is plugged in. Let's look and see. That would be easier. It's not. All trusty. see if I regret that later. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put the paint on this one too. Then we can see the difference of putting it on wet on this part and dry on this part. And I can't stick my finger in the hole this time, so let's see what we'll do. I'm excited to finish up the little tray that I, I through the black um, clay paint on the other day whenever I had black on my brush I was working on another project and I'm like well while I have this black on my brush let me throw it on this tray that somebody gave me and uh, make something out of that and I've been trying to think of what I was going to do about that and I hope what I'm fixing to do is not an epic fail because that can happen I am a human being here and I'm fixing to do something that I've already failed at once but I'm not, I'm going to get back up on that horse. And if it doesn't work this time, I'm going to get back up on that horse again. I'm going to keep trying until I got it going on. So now we've painted on dry and we're painting on the wet. We've applied uh, new molds and painted over old molds. I'm trying to make sure and job the paint real good up under the edges. Hey Sharon. I'm wanting, I'm loving to being able to practice with these molds on something small like a, like these ornaments before I start putting them on furniture because I don't know if y'all can see there. I got a whole pile of them over there. I, I, I might have got carried away whenever I bought those. Somebody had them on sale who was going out of business and then last minute she had free shipping as well and I'm like, I'm trying them and it, you know, before I decide whether to sell them here in our store and all that, I want to be sure that you know and confident in me being able to help people with them and in you know that people are going to love them so 
I uh, bought too many and I'm going to use them up and then I'm going to uh, I've used them on some small furniture and things before and it turned out great but before I'm you know really wanting to show how you can do a nice expensive piece and make it look fantabulous if anybody remembers Christopher Lowell that was thank you Sharon I appreciate that that was uh his famous word fantabulous my mother loved watching him I don't even know what happened to him he was kind of a short brown haired going bald guy that he did decorating shows like in the 80s I guess it was maybe the 90s I'm glad I had to turn it upside down because I thought I had every bit of this done and now I'm seeing some white places under there. And I'm going to have to dry it some and then come back and do that finger place. Oh, yes it is paper clay, Sharon. Uh, I'll hold it back up there in just a minute and get this trying to grab it, but now I didn't put a fingerprint someplace else. I really like to use the uh, Amazing Casting Resin. I've got a box of that right there. You can probably see that little bit of a purple box there in the corner. That's my favorite thing to use, like for furniture pieces and things like that for the molds. But uh, it takes a second to, uh, I mean, it, it, it like hardens really fast. And I want to make sure that these were going to mold around the ornaments. So I'm using paper clay, this, the Prima one here. This is the tiniest package of it. I got this from the lady who was going out of business too. And I thought I was getting the big regular size ones and thought I was getting a heck of a deal, but it, you know, it helped somebody. So my other tip for that was when you put those on, I'm using wood glue, but I hear the E6000 is really good, but I just stuck it uh, a piece, I used wood glue and then I stuck a piece of this painter's tape on here to hold the edges down while it's drying. So that was my tip for that. And I love using this, but not when it's gonna have to go around something rounded. But, but if you're making a straight piece, that's my favorite. And I also got this that I've not used yet. And when I do break it out, I will, uh, I'll show y'all, but it's called epoxy sculpt. And somebody else that, uh, that I know uses that. So I'm gonna try it, just not today, but I'm gonna try it soon. So we did a little medallion to go on top of one of the ornaments, this one, and we went back over this one that I had put on wet, and I think that's dry enough now, and I'm going to go, um, I'm going to put, probably fixing to scare myself, um, because I'm going to put some dark and decrepit on here, and normally I wouldn't do that without, uh, putting another top coat on first, because it's going to really put, uh, it's really gonna sink into this clay paint and make it darker than I anticipated going. But we may as well see what it's gonna be like, right? See what happens if the, uh, I'm gonna go heaviest on the paper clay things themselves because they do have a top coat on them already that's because that's from the first coat of paint that i put on so i'm going to go heaviest on there and then let that sit on there and get here in the edges a little bit and let that sit on there and then i'll uh lightly put it all everywhere else then try to wipe some of it off and then come back and wipe this off and it should make them the very darkest of all can y'all see where i'm doing it not worried about being neat because it would be you know when you're aging something it is going to be dirtier around the crevices and all that so this one has uh diy crinoline on it and i'm using the diy uh dark and decrepit liquid patina on there and here we go. Let's go around the edges of the top part real good because that would be good and dark. 
and then I'm just gonna this is gonna be my top coat for these to seal that paint so I have to put it everywhere and I'm just hoping it doesn't sink in tremendously before I start wiping it off but it may sometimes those are the the happy little accidents still on a Bob Ross comment there is where it's not what you intended but it looks better than you intended that's my goal better than I intended and I have a wax rag here I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna first try to get off of these uh, centered edges Oh, it's coming off good. Yay. Yay, me. I'm just dabbing at it uh, and wiping at it. I'm not doing it really hard trying to pull off a whole lot because I want it to look kind of dirty looking. Now I'm going to go over the top of these and I'm going to leave it down in those crevices. It'll dry in there. I kind of like it. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, Sharon, if you have the big package, I have a big package, too. Here it is, and it's the one I was trying to use in the man cave the other night, uh, and it was all dried out, and it was just crumbled into nothing. I put it in this foil to see if there was any of it that I could save, because I didn't have a Ziploc in there, and I put a damp paper towel in there even with it, and it may be somewhat savable, um, but it'll make a whole lot more than you think, but put it in a Ziploc. That maybe even put it in a Ziploc and put that Ziploc in a Ziploc because it will dry out and that's a shame when you're wanting to do something and you got the the stuff right there and then you turn around and uh, you can't because it dried out. I wanted to try one more thing. I'm leaned over here to the side. I have a big basket on this side. Here's something. Let's see what this is. Warm gold. I'll take it. I have some, uh, I'm not even open to this one yet, some burnishing, hey candy, some uh, burnishing waxes from Dixie Belle. This one, I guess it's called, no, gilding, they call it gilding. This one's warm gold. And I'm just gonna stick my finger in it and run it over the edges of this to give just a tad of sheen and bling to the molds. And that's not 100% dry, obviously, because I just put that on there, but it looks like it's going to be just fine, and I know that there's somebody out there who's going to think this is the coolest thing ever. And I'm going to put uh, a really pretty ribbon up on the top to hang it by, maybe a bow, something like that. So there you go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It was just a big old clear ornament. Like this one. I would want that on my tree. And <laughs> so if nobody buys it, I may have that on my tree. Ooh, Seattle. Awesome. Hi, Linda. Uh, I'm in uh, Deritter, Louisiana, which is in the west central part of the state near Texas. We're probably an hour from... Uh, Jasper, Texas, 45 minutes or so from Jasper, Texas. This doesn't look 100% dry. I'm going to hit it with this. And we're going to see what happens if we come on here with uh, some black wax. And this is uh, Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax in Black. 
and I've used a good bit of it already. I don't have a brush down here. I'm going to do it with a rag. I don't usually do that with a rag. I'm going to reach over there and grab a Kleenex, as a matter of fact. So, and their paint doesn't, I used this vintage duck egg on it. Their paint doesn't require a sealer, so it shouldn't absorb in there as quickly as, uh, as it would if it was on the clay-based paint. I've got a tissue. Please let me don't regret that western iowa uh, thank you carrie and yes it's the uh where did i put it y'all i had it here a second ago it's the paper clay from uh prima black is harsh it's not my color so let's see what's gonna happen here because i'm still wanting to age this same thing i mean my whole goal is to try to age the piece and I'm trying to that's not going to do what I want it to do let me see if I can get this no I'm going to use that on that other thing we'll use this one I'm going to use this brush so that I can sort of job some of this wax underneath the edges of the the molds that we put on here to make sure that it gets in those crevices really good my fingers are fatter than they need to be just gonna go real just swirl it around in there and you want to go over the details first and get it in there so it can sort of stain those areas a little more than it does the rest of it and that that detail uh, you know makes a lot of difference on it getting dark enough there let's get the other side I love this one this one is a new uh, IOD mold some of the other molds I was using uh, are the Prima molds, but this particular one is an IOD mold. It's out of their new line. Hello. I'm doing a live video teaching how to do uh, molds on ornaments. So, making sure to get that good and, and up in the crevices. I go back to my tissue to just wipe it every place else. Their wax is soft, soft, soft. Uh, I've never actually seen anything like it. I thought that the wax that I was using before was like soft as butter. This stuff is like soft as butter that you left out on the coffee table for five hours. It, it, it is really, really soft wax. Um, so it takes me a little getting used to, and I've never waxed with a Kleenex before or a tissue before. It is a Kleenex brand, but I. Uh, I usually use brushes, but I'm afraid if with this glass underneath here and, and worrying about adhesion of the paint, that if I start using a brush with rough bristles on here, that I'm going to uh, remove some of the paint from the glass. So I'm trying to avoid that. That's why I've got this Kleenex out. stuff is so smooth but it I feel a little bit of drag with it so I know that it's drying on there pretty quick be real careful too if you do this see I've got my fingers stuck up in there that I have found is the ideal way to get off all of all of this done but this first one right here it has like a shard of glass from the manufacturing process sticking out through there and I couldn't even break it off it, it really is sticking my finger and I uh, so be careful with that, especially if you have your kids or grandkids helping you or anything. Look, I did it. Pulled off the paint, being too rough. But I will touch that up because it's supposed to look uh, aged anyway, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time worrying about it. Look how pretty the detail in that comes out whenever you buff it off of the uh, outer layer. What I'll do with that uh, area where I just showed you that I rubbed too hard is come back, put a little more paint on there, and buff a little more gently. Maybe I should use a rag that has a little more tooth to it than a tissue. Okay. 
you know, I'm pulling it all off. So now we know that part of it's a fail. So what would you do if you were me at this point? I'm going to put another uh, sealer on there. That's another good thing with the, the Dixie Bell Wax. You can come back after it dries. It's going to dry pretty hard, probably by tomorrow. And I'll come back and put a coat of Gator Hide on here, which will help that to uh, adhere. But what I'm going to do right now is continue to wipe this. Then I'm going to touch up that blue paint and I'll come back to it later. That probably happened because I just painted this like five minutes ago and it really needed a little more time to to adhere to that glass before I started uh, rubbing wax on and off of it. I put my first brush in the water already, so I'm going to stick my finger in the paint and dab it. And I may just uh, dab with wax later before I leave and right over these areas. And that way, whenever I come in tomorrow, I can put the gator hot on there and it will have had time for the paint to cure a little bit. Or I may be able to buff the little bit of wax that's uh, still on here onto uh, these areas so that they'll be lightly covered. There you go. And the bonus that I said I was going to throw out there is, okay, when I get that off of, let me get the right lids on stuff, is this tray. And this is just a cheapo silver looking tray but uh, one of my friends brought it up here to me and said hey I thought you might could do something with this so that is my goal and I had some of the uh, DIY black velvet paint on my brush the other day while I was painting something else so I put a quick coat on here you see it was just a silver tray Let's see if that even says distributed by something Goldensville, Tennessee. I don't, so I don't know if that's a Dollar Tree item or exactly what that was. But here's the part that I don't know about that I'm sharing. This is, or, uh, I don't know if y'all remember the other day I made uh, one of these using my silhouette on the Cricut brand paper, trying to make my own stencil and I failed. It was a big fat fail. And uh, I don't know what, what it's gonna do to this. I'm gonna try it with y'all and we'll find out. And that's one we had, if you're interested in tips on uh, doing better stencils, uh, look for the red table that I did with Amy of Favored Nest. She came in and gave us some tips on using a stencil and being more successful than I was. And, you know, I don't want to talk uh, bad about a company, but I've heard that the Cricut stencil stuff wasn't that good, but that was after I already bought three rolls of it. So um, I'm wanting to try to use them. And so I went on my silhouette and uh, made this, which was gonna go on a sign. Oh, this already ain't working. Look, it's tearing right there. I don't know why that's tearing right there either, but it is. I weeded it already, but uh, it doesn't look like I did. This right here is why you go to people like Amy and have them make your stencils for you. If y'all have some tips on what to use. She gave us tips during that uh, video. I'm not going to be able to do this. She gave us tips during that video on what brand she uses in her business of stencil material. And uh, I don't like this a bit. Y'all give me one second. I'm going to go get a regular stencil. And I'm going to give a thumbs down to Cricut stencil paper.
about family. This one said, welcome friends and family. And I thought that would be really cute on a tray. And it may be if you have better stencil making capabilities than me. That's pretty, but I think it's too big. Okay, we're gonna use this one right here. It's gonna match that chair we have in there. What Amy taught us the other day about stenciling is to use uh, to use the same color as your background to begin with. Not really liking the black, I don't blame you. Uh, black is just not one of my favorite colors, but I wanted to try it. As she said, whenever you're doing your stencil, you after you put it down, and she would use a self-adhesive stencil, uh, after you put it down, you go over it with the same color as your background first, and that prevents the uh, sort of the bleed through. I've never done that on these before, but I'm going to do it today because I want to show y'all what she showed us on there, even though this is not a self-adhesive stencil. This is what she recommended for the stenciling. And I'm just using a plain, uh, small uh, chip brush because that's what I had available. I usually, I have a chip brush, I think I gave y'all that tip before, where you use your regular chip brush, but cut it off about an inch up on there, about as far as I've got there. And then the bristles are really stiff and then you can pounce with it better. But that one's at home because I was going to be stenciling on a jewelry box at home. And I didn't bring it with me to work this morning. Wrong dryer. I intended on at this point with the original uh, the original stencil I was going to go in with red. These flowers won't look good in red, so I'm going to go with DIY Apothecary and do a portion of them with that, like around the edges. my table to see whatever what other color paint I have sitting here nothing interesting I'm gonna go with Dixie Belle Savannah Mist and this will just be a two-tone blue color I'll go with Dixie Belle Vintage Duck Egg for the third blue color. Because I have it right here. There's not going to be a whole lot of difference in the colors on these. But boom, there it is. 
and one other thing to sort of finish these top things off I'm gonna go through here and probably um, put something else but you if you frame around the edges with your just using the side of your chip brush it sort of really brings it in together This has some little pointies right there, and I'm going to go back and try to get those in that inner edge. Just bringing a little bit more detail to it. Wish I had some purple or some uh, peach or something like that out here to go with it, but I don't. And the thing about paint is if I wake up tomorrow and I hate every bit of this, this whole thing here can be red. I am going to offload some more of this paint and try to just drop a brush just a little bit across here just to give a little bit more of this color. Just a little bit of streaks through there. not be what we originally intended but it has changed from what it was now if you know me I'm probably going to come back and put some purple polka dots around the edges and give it a little more color but I didn't uh, I don't have any more color sitting here I actually took all the paints that are normally on my table right here and stacked them up shaped like a Christmas tree in our display window uh, But now we can uh, go over this this because this was mostly the, the background especially was a, a chalky clay based paint it's going to need some type of sealer unless we're going to use it as a chalkboard and that may would be really cute too is to come in around these edges and write in the words welcome friends there that would be really cute there's always something else you can do with it to change it up like I said, this this was free. Somebody gave it to me. They got it at the Dollar Tree, I'm sure. But now it's something that, you know, can at least be used once or twice for something. My granddaughters will love it. But I appreciate y'all joining me today. And uh, if I missed any of your questions or anything, I'm going to come back to them. I'll look at this. I'll get notifications of it tonight. I'll read back through and see if there's anything in there. And I'll be happy to answer those. I'm going to sit here for a little while and get some paint on the rest of those ornaments and uh, clean up my mess because we do have a festival this weekend. And, and you know, this, this area is open to our customers to walk in and come through. So i got to look at least semi- <laughs> semi-organized but i appreciate you joining me if you can give me uh, you're very welcome sharon uh, if y'all can give me any shares or hearts or anything that helps to spread it out farther and i appreciate that it helps my my business grow and i'm able to you know justify giving away the time and and everything that i put into it but i do love it i'm doing it with my heart so thanks bye